The 5th Annual Extra Life Video Game Marathon is coming up on October 20th, 2012. Now it's time for gamers to make a difference. Extra Life is just like a run or a walk or a bike event, except you never have to leave the comfort of your own living room. Just sign up online at extra-life.org to register. On October 20th at 8 a.m., you play any games you want for 24 hours. Find out more and sign up to play online at extra-life.org. Play games. Heal kids. Extra Life. Oh, let me just tell you this, Dan. Remember that microphone that I was going to buy you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, after three different times of emails of Amazon.co.uk saying, we're having problem processing your payment method. Three different times, three different prices. So, I don't know if the price is auto-adjusted. You know how Amazon always adjusts? Their prices always change. Right. Uh, so, I'm guessing that's what it is. But my mother said, you should have answered the phone. Visa was trying to call you all day. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But the weird thing is, she's like, your card's being used over in the UK. It's being used. (laughs) Draw your sword, knock your arrows, and ready your spell book. It's time for another episode of The Gamesman. What role will you play? Gals and Guildies, welcome to episode 86 of The Gamesman. This is the show for the week of September the 24th, 2012. I am Steve Conger, also known as JSS Lifelike, on basically every gaming service imaginable. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk some games. We're going to talk some games. After being exhausted by the huge RPG show last week, it's time to talk some games. And uh, obviously... My six-shooter in my holster, right at my hip, uh, Daniel Knappman, hardly Dan. Hey, man. You were old, old reliable. Yeah, yeah, I've just you got this horrible mental image of being in your pocket now. <laughs> you're, you're on the side. It's not the middle pocket, it's the side pocket. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> and as a special guest, we kind of brought in uh, somebody who's going to talk about a game that uh, neither Dan nor I have played this week, and that man is... Mr. Shelby Coulter, Nebula 427. Greetings. Hello. Yo, what's up? How are you? I'm doing pretty good, you know? Just hanging out. It's nice to be on a podcast that I don't have to worry about editing or recording, so... (laughs) Well, you have to worry about recording, but... (laughs) I don't have to constantly watch. Is Audacity working? Did it crash? Oh, no. Oh, I know. It's a pain in the ass. (laughs) (laughs) It is good to be here. I am uh, honored to be once again welcomed into uh, the Open Gamesman Arms, so... Yeah, I've been wanting to get you on for a while. It's just that, you know, schedules being what they are, and, you know, Dan and I barely have time to get, you know... Obviously, like we do it once a week, but it seems like it's always a fight to try to get the, to try to get time and get schedules to overlap. So why don't you just fill everybody in on sort of what your background is and, and where you where you hang out these days virtually? That is. Uh, well, I was born in a very young age. Um, <laughs> yeah, like zero. <laughs> is that going too far back? Maybe no. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I am. Uh, I guess you would say. One of the dudes from nintendo I don't... I'm not really a founder. I guess uh, that was another dude that, you know, I'm not going to talk about him because I'm here on my own. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I write for nintendo I do uh, the po- podcast editing and recording over there, write editorials, reviews, uh, 
you know, that's what we do. We uh, we don't just focus on Nintendo, even though Nintendo's in the URL. So the only reason that's there is because the founder that shall not be named uh, used to only play <laughs> Nintendo stuff. But I've, I've tried to, my best to break him of that habit. So, <laughs> Yeah, you've done a little bit. A little bit. I do what I can. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what, what's new with you, man? Not a whole lot. You know, just uh, trying to... You make the time for chores to not exist so I can play more video games. And uh, uh, I spend more time writing about games and talking about them than I do actually playing them anymore, which is kind of weird, but I guess that's kind of part of it. Uh, there you go. That's it right there. <laughs> the, the the funny thing is, and I, I know I've said this before, but time is the resource that you wish you had more of, and, and you, you, know, you have an abundance of it when you're young and once you get older. Oh. I kind of think of it this way. If I'd have had the time now that I had back, you know, when I was in like high school and had nothing but time, if I would have instead of trying to learn combos and Tekken 3 would have learned to speak a foreign language, I could be speaking Latin, Japanese, and Spanish right now. Hey, you know, I thought a lot about that before. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a lot about that before. I have definitely considered Rosetta Stone a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well that'll teach you tech and combos, though. I don't yeah, understand maybe the not, but it'll, it'll at least be able to teach you how to read the import version of everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan, what's going on with you? Uh, no, not a huge amount, really. Uh, lots and lots of Guild Wars, and that's been about it, really. Uh, my foot's yeah, been playing up, so I haven't been sleeping. <laughs> well, you kind of you hit a little plateau in Guild Wars, didn't you? By the time this goes out, I'll be level eighty. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> 210 hours so far. I've played a lot. Oh, 210 hours. Man. Had that game been out like two weeks or something at this point? Three weeks or so. Three, four weeks, yeah. <laughs> that's dedication right there. That's, a, that's admirable. <laughs> it's not been out long, no. <laughs> it's, it's a damn good game. It is a damn good game. And a damn good game, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, Boom. <laughs> couldn't pass it up. So, yeah, I mean, I, I finally got back on there a little bit. I just, I have had no time. And the time that I've had, and it's funny, I mean, we just talked about time, but the time that I've had is in small chunks. So for me to start multi-playing with other people, it's just not fair, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I just haven't been doing it. I've been popping on some console stuff and, um, actually just streaming a lot of Netflix, just watching stuff. I kind of got into Warehouse 13. I've been watching that a little bit and it's campy. Uh, but it, uh, it's no alphas. Let's just say that. <laughs> Wait, did you say alf? Alphas. Did you, have you, have oh, you okay. seen alphas yet? Uh, the, the sci-fi no. channel show? I, I don't watch TV anymore. I figure I watched enough TV when I was a little kid. So I'm trying to, <laughs> you know. Instead, I just stare at the TV with video games on it when I actually have time. Alphas is fantastic. It is great. It's it, it's superhumans. It's it's written by Zach Penn. Okay. Uh, but they're you know they're a bunch of and I, I don't know Dan have we talked about this before or no? Um, I've told you about it know. tons of times. Yeah, you told me about it. Yeah. I don't know on the show. And I can't remember. But I, it, it's it's a bunch of superhumans apparently, and they're not you know they're called alphas because they're called like alpha humans because they have some sense or some skill or ability that is above those normal people. Uh, but you know, like one guy has like adrenaline fueled strength and another, the, the chick, she's like a human forensics team basically by herself. Like she can just look at something and it's like, she can use her eyes like as a, as a microscope to see things and hear CSI, things. CSI. Yeah, got basically. It. And they basically work for this, uh, this like government agency. There's like five or six of them. And the one kid that plays the autistic kid is super, super good. And he's hilarious. And he brings a lot of comic relief to, to the show. And it's really, really good. It's a lot better than any sci-fi network show has any right to be. <laughs> you know, it is so good. But yeah, I've been watching a lot of that and, you know, kind of getting caught up on burn notice and stuff. So I mean, I, it kind of is what it is, but I, the time has been of the essence lately and it's just not there. But and, uh, enough about my lack of, of time management skills and scheduling <laughs> and things like that. But Shelby, what have you been playing? We kind of brought you in because you've been playing a, a little game, obviously, that we said Dan and I haven't. Yeah. So I'm guessing the game you're uh, speaking of is Borderlands 2. Yeah. 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 So I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Borderlands. Um, Last count, my time counter in the first Borderlands was about 460 hours over three different systems. Oh, you sound like Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did this over a course of like maybe a year and a half instead of three weeks, yeah. you know. <laughs> or I guess if you extrapolate where he's at right now, it'd be, you know, four and a half Six. weeks of the way Ready's going. <laughs> 
So um, I guess you could say I kind of know what I'm talking about when uh, I'm talking about the Borderlands. I played all the classes in the first one. I, I didn't max them all out, but I definitely uh, I definitely mained a Siren class. So I was pretty excited when uh, Gearbox said they were making Borderlands 2. So I decided to jump right in to uh, continue the Siren class run there. And I got to say, this is a pretty good game. On its own or in relation to the original? Well... I never played Diablo or anything like that. I guess I should probably come out and say that. So, you know, if you want to blacklist me now, I understand. I've never been a big PC gamer. I didn't have my first computer till like 2003 when I was in college. Okay. And even and even then it was not a powerhouse. You know, I had access to compute to like, you know, maybe a Tandy 500 or something at school and you know, uh, coming growing up in a small podunk town public school. So, our computer lab wasn't the greatest. <laughs> it was kind of like just right next to the janitor's closet. Oh, really. You know, I totally had a Tandy 1000HX when I was a kid. <laughs> totally. So because of that, I've never really been big on PC games and uh, much bigger on console stuff. So uh, I've been playing it on 360 mostly just because back when the first Borderlands came out, I had a PS3, but the person I wanted to play it with was on 360. That, that kind of problem where, you know, you have to gravitate where your friends list is mostly. Yeah, yeah. And nothing against the 360, it's a fine system. But going through, I, so I think it's a good game no matter what, but if you played the first Borderlands, uh, from what I've experienced, I maybe only got about, oh heck, I don't know, maybe seven hours in at most so far. It's still a good game. I mean, if you've played Borderlands 1, it's more Borderlands. If you haven't played Borderlands 1, it's a loot-driven game that's a pretty fun shooter with a great sense of humor. Well, I mean, here's this is my thing. Now, obviously, like you said, where you gravitate to where your friends list is, sometimes you don't even gravitate there and when your friends list is bugged, <laughs> like mine is on the PlayStation 3, okay? Right. Uh, originally, I could only see one person on my friends list, which did not allow me to play with anybody in a private match, except for that person, and that person was never on, okay? <laughs> and then... When I got my new Slim, not the Slim Slim or <laughs> whatever this new one is going to be called or whatever. Um, Slim Fast. <laughs> yeah, the, the PS3 Thinner. Um, <laughs> so when I got my new one, I said, oh, God, it fixed it. But it fixed it where it only put five other people on there, and those people are not playing either. So, <laughs> Well, that's progress. You just need to buy about six more PS3s, right? <laughs> God, that's ridiculous. But I did research it, and I guess the actual PSN account is bugged somehow with that game. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 account-wide, and it's not anything to do with the console, which I was hoping that it was. So, like I said, all we have to do is play in public games, and I have to keep kicking people, and... I, I hate to do it, but th this is the thing that bugs me. All Gearbox had to do was put a password protection option on a public game to fix the problem. That's definitely a, uh, I would say that's probably a very PC focused answer. Yeah, maybe. To a console problem. Maybe. I mean, not that it wouldn't work, but that definitely doesn't seem like a standard thing I see in console no. games. I mean, I guess maybe Call of Duty maybe did it, but that was all in browser. Like, well, that's even PC based. Sheesh. I mean, I don't know. So I guess in true fashion of the movie that my wife made me watch the other day, which was uh, kindergarten cop. I want to ask you a couple of questions <laughs> <laughs> and I want them well, answered immediately. <laughs> uh, it's not a tumor. Number one. I hope it's not anyway. <laughs> so, is the AI indeed smarter? Yes, very much so. Even from the little I've played. Uh, so if you don't know, basically to play Borderlands 1, you pull the trigger and run backwards until you see the credits. That's pretty yeah. much what you got to do. Yeah. And and it's ridiculously addictive and fun. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, within the first you know handful of enemies I was fighting, they're, you know, they're rolling left and right. They're stumbling when they're running at me. They're throwing rocks at me. I mean... They definitely up the AI on this, which is good. What I guess kind of good, good for a new game, but not good for somebody that played 460 hours of the first game and is just used to standing there and shooting things and having fun <laughs> doing it. Oh, that's probably true. <laughs> but yeah, I've seen huge improvement of the AI. I mean, they'll they'll take cover. I mean, they would kind of take cover in the first time, but just you know, if it, they felt like they needed to. Now they're like, oh shoot, you know, I need to roll into cover and do some James Bond maneuvers to get out of the way of these bullets. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, I was hoping for more of that. I, mean, I, I think I have total, I mean, probably 10 hours in, in Borderlands, which is basically nothing, but it was like 
uh, maybe three hours the first time before I got frustrated with the whole friends list thing. And then I've since then, and since it's been free on PlayStation Plus, I put about another six or seven in, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, so here's my other question. Is there enough of an incremental change to the sequel for someone, let's say somebody doesn't have 60 bucks, Borderlands 1, is it really a perfectly fine, like, methadone sort of substitute type of thing? Yeah, yeah, if you want to dive into this and you don't have the cash to drop on a new game, but Borderlands 1's in a shelf for 15, 20 bucks, um, yeah, I mean, that's a, still a fantastic game. Uh, the only thing I would really say that's wrong with that is, you know, some of the boss fights toward the end are ridiculously easy because you can just kind of stand in one spot and shoot. Yeah, I've heard that. And, uh, there's some other, I mean, the frame rate was really my biggest beef with the first game. I mean, it would drop to, you know, single digits at some times, you know, for a a couple seconds, which is really just kind of takes you out of, you know, shooting this giant enemy space crab in the face. But, you know. (laughs) (laughs) The weak spot for massive damage. Exactly. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, if you don't want to, if you don't have the time or rather the money to plunk down on the on Borderlands Two, you know, jump into one. I mean, you can. A Steam was selling it for ridiculously prices, like seven bucks there for a while during the Steam sale. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great game still, and it still holds up. I mean, you're just gonna have some frame rate issues, but if you've never played the second one, you're not really you don't really know what you're missing, I guess, with the AI. And and I, I'm hoping that it's still gonna be relevant, and I think it will. Uh, but this to me. This screams sixty dollar four pack on the Steam sale. Oh yeah, they did that with um, the first one at some point. I think you could buy like four Game of the Year editions or something for like, God, it was something ridiculous, like the price of one game or something crazy yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean that's like, kind of what I want. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking about. I don't know. Hell, I, right now I'm thinking about asking for for Christmas. All I want people to get me is like Steam gift cards. <laughs> that's like all I want. That's it. Well, I haven't played uh, Borderlands 2 on the PC, but I know the first one on PC, uh, that was probably, well, not probably, I would say that was the worst system to play it on. Not because um, it didn't work as a shooter, just because the interface stuff was all built for a console and a controller. Yeah. And so, like, trying to play, like, mouse and keyboard stuff, I guess you're plugging in a 360 controller, you're good. But if you're trying to play mouse and keyboard, you're going to hit some things like, oh, how come I can't scroll this? Or, oh, I accidentally scrolled the mouse wheel too far. Oh, I got to reach all the way to one to get my grenade or something yeah, like that, you know? Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd be, especially with big big picture mode now, which I'll probably talk about in a little bit, which is really awesome on Steam. <laughs> Using a, a controller has never been better. And even Borderlands 2, I'd probably still use a controller for it because it's obvious that that's what the game's made for. Yeah, totally. You know. Um, so what else are you playing? Anything else? Uh, I dove into, uh, spent a little time messing around with Kirby's Dream Collection for the Wii. That came out, uh, I guess, the Sunday before Borderlands 2. They showed up from Amazon the same time at my house. I'm a big Kirby fan, and I gotta say, this is probably, not probably, I say this is the best anniversary collection of, like, any game they've thrown out there, other than, like, maybe those, you know, ridiculous $300 Street Fighter 25th anniversary box things they got going on. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a solid little package. It's got, uh, six different Kirby games, I think, six or five. It's got Dreamland 1, 2, and 3, Kirby's Adventure, Superstar, and, uh, Kirby 64. So I guess that's six, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's got an art book in it, which isn't just a little pamphlet like you get with some game collections. <coughs> Catherine, <coughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it also comes with like a 45 or 48 track CD. Wow. Most of which is just music from the game, but I think the last three tracks are like orchestrated. I haven't popped it in yet because I know most of that Kirby music by heart. <laughs> So I just kind of looked at the track list and kind of hummed the songs to myself. I'm like, okay, that was awesome. Well, <laughs> what is it, thirty nine ninety nine? Yeah, I think it's forty dollar deal. So it's a good little package. Is it is it worth that? Because the more I think about it, I think about virtual console games on a disc for forty bucks. You could pick up, I believe, Kirby Superstar, Kirby's Adventure, and Kirby's. Uh, 64, Kirby 64, I think are all on the Virtual Console, I believe. Mm-hmm. I don't know about Dreamland 3. It might be, but that's the weakest of uh, the Dreamland games, at least. But you're not going to be able to get Kirby's Dreamland 1 and 2 because those are Game Boy games. Okay. All right. And that really surprised me when I saw them on this package. I'm like, oh, so this is Nintendo admitting that they can run G- uh, Game Boy emulation on the Wii and they just don't want to sell it to us. Yeah, so. yeah. Man, yeah, yeah, that that's a good point. It runs really well, though. I mean, it's they're not the same versions, I don't think, as on the Virtual Console. When you try to play like a, a VC NES game, 
on a 16 by 9 TV, if you're Wii set to widescreen mode, it's going to try to stretch it. Yeah. And yeah. it looks like garbage. I mean, not that, you know, 8-bit games look great on a new LCD TVs anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, this disc, um, it keeps the same aspect ratio. And they actually put like a cool little Kirby kind of colorful border border around things. They don't just put a black outline or something. So Okay. And the games scale really well. They look good. You don't get, uh, I mean, you still get your slowdown. You still get your screen flicker. But you don't get those weird progressive scan lines like you do on an LCD TV. Mm-hmm. LCD TV that I yeah. get when I play my NES on my TV and it looks like crap, but I'm too lazy to move it to a different room. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I don't blame you. I'd do the same thing. But these are all these are the Kirby games you would want in a uh, collection. The only one I'm kind of disappointed of is there's no Kirby's Pinball Land, but they definitely stuck with the mainstream platformers, so yeah. that's pretty cool. But I mean, these are all like the games that uh, uh, Sakurai was involved with, I believe, all except for okay. Kirby 64 may not be him. Or Dreamland 3, but Dreamland 1 and 2 and Kirby's Adventure are definitely him uh, in charge of. So those are the solid Kirby games. Those are the ones you would want. And they're all fine games, if I could say. And no Air Ride? No, no Air Ride. No GameCube games and no GBA games. They pretty much okay. uh, stuck with the mainstream stuff. Um, no no Kirby's Dream Course or anything like that either. So There's only one reason that I'm jealous that you bought this. Why is that? Okay. And if anyone out there bought Kirby's Dream Col- Dreamland Collection or Dream Collection and does not utilize their Club Nintendo uh, uh, options, <laughs> I will be more than happy to take your Club Nintendo code off of your hands because everyone that registers the Kirby Dream Collection gets registered for a drawing for a deck of Kirby cards that are they're circular. I thought it was a set of coasters when I first saw it when I was filling out that. Seat I know. Today. But they're so awesome. Oh, yeah, they're, and, they're and, totally sweet. Oh. The question was like, would you like to be entered into this chance to win these free Kirby playing cards? I'm like, well, of course. Why do I? Why is there even an option? <laughs> I know. I got the email. <laughs> I got the email, and I said, would I? <laughs> would I? Of course hey, I would. Speaking of the Kirby Club Nintendo Awards, apparently for maybe a, for, uh, all of 20 minutes, as long as they were up, there was like a 1,000 limited edition Kirby 20th anniversary medals on Club Nintendo's award. I had no idea. I didn't know either. I just got on one day. I thought, oh, wow, this is awesome. I'll get one of these. Oh, they're already gone. They made a yeah. thousand of them. They like must have the, lasted 10 minutes. <laughs> like the useless gold nunchuck. <laughs> uh. it's like, it serves its purpose, but it does not con- contain any actual real gold. So yeah. <laughs> make sure to note that in the description. So are you still plugging away at Persona 4 Arena as well? Uh, I think I'm kind of done with that one. Uh, not because I don't want to play it anymore, just because nobody kind of will play it with me anymore. I mean, I got one friend who still wants to play, but like you said before, scheduling things is kind of a nightmare. Yeah. But I've done everything in that game I'm realistically going to be able to do, just because I don't have the time to in, to sit down and count frames and take them three, you know, like I used mm-hmm. to. Yeah. But that game's pretty awesome. It's a solid fighter. I'm huge in the Persona franchise. Every one of these games I'm talking about, I'm a huge fan of. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's, it's the 40-hour story mode that's basically just like a visual novel, and you just sit there and push a button and let it go, and you might fight a fight for some reason. But the fighting is solid. It's like a kind of like a scaled-back version of Blaze Blue or something. It's all quarter-circle moves, mostly. So Okay. Mm-hmm. And, man, perfect pairing between Atlas and uh, Arc System Works. So, like, the detail in that game and the amount of nods to uh, the Persona series is just, it makes me sick and with joy how good they did. Yeah, Ark kind of knows the deal. They, uh, yeah, they're, they, do. They're, they know what they're doing. Uh, they are pretty good. Is that about it for you? That's pretty much it. I mean, I could talk about some other games and other stuff like that, but nobody listening to this podcast wants to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, you're up. There's one thing I've got to mention. I haven't played it yet, but I've installed Black Mesa. I'm really looking forward to trying that out. You yeah. know, I sort of have a little... There's a little piece of me that kind of wants to check that out. Yeah, well, you get the first... Um, I can't remember how many 
missions, but you get a fair chunk of it for free uh, before it goes on to you know, the rest of it being sold. And it looks really good from what I've seen so far, so yeah, I'm looking forward to giving that a go. Other than that, it's been um, Path of Exile. I had a, another beta weekend uh, last weekend. That was good. Played a bit of that with Common Troll. It, it seems to be harder. Now, I don't know if that... Uh, yeah, talk to me about the changes. I, w- I want to know what's different. Well, it looks nicer. Uh, didn't think that was actually possible. Yeah. Uh, especially not on my machine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's looking a lot better. There's a uh, few new bits that I noticed. Yeah, different music here and there. And I don't know if it's because I've been playing so much Guild Wars 2 recently, but it, it seems a lot... I was dying a hell of a lot more. It was, yeah, definitely a lot harder. Yeah, there's just not, not a huge amount of changes that I really noticed. Just, yeah, definitely seemed to have ramped up the difficulty. And, uh, yeah, it looks nicer than ever. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really looking forward to playing it. Now, I thought Troll said something about maybe they, and, unless he was talking about the next game that you're gonna, that you're gonna talk about, about reworking skill trees and stuff like that. So, yeah, did, actually, did you notice it, any of that? It does look like that massive, um, it's more, not really a tree, is it? That no, web. it's, yeah, like a sphere <laughs> grid. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the that, web. That yeah. seems to be more complicated than ever before. <laughs> is that uh, even possible? Yeah. Um, there's, there are loads of different paths and things going on there now, and the, all the key things are still there. They've just kind of moved it around, made it look a bit more fancy. Okay. Shelby, have you seen the, uh, <laughs> have you seen the skill grid for Path of Exile? Do you know what we're talking about? I have, I have not. I have not. Okay. Hold on a second. So is this a skill path, or is this some sort of weird alien version of Chinese checkers? What the heck? <laughs> bit of Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much you can customize your character in wow. that game. Some of that yeah. stuff looks like it's deep, too. Sheesh. Yeah. Oh, this whole yeah. this, this screen moves. Holy cow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, if you go down to the bottom, you can put it in full screen and have a proper look and drag it around. I have a 15-inch <laughs> monitor. There's no way it's all going to fit on my screen. <laughs> Hey, I've got a 32 <laughs> inch and it doesn't fit on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, that is the, the path of exile skill tree. It is completely ridiculous. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. And, and this game is going to be all free to play on the PC. Completely free to play. Nice. With micros. With ethical micro tra- transaction. Exactly. Yeah. Now, has there been any new additions to the uh, the in-game store? Can you can still only purchase like uh, another character slot or another storage panel? Or I didn't even look. <laughs> Looking at this skill tree <laughs> at, and the in-game store, I kind of expect it to be you know instead of buying a skill like buying an extra character slot, you're buying real estate on a map. This is huge. I mean, it is. <laughs> it's insane. It is insane. <laughs> Uh, uh, what were the what were the server populations like? Were there a good bit of people playing over the weekend? Uh, yeah, they, they had a couple of good um, good events on as well, which sounded quite interesting. There was a, uh, a I think it was a four hour event with permadeath. Anyway, oh really? Yeah, hardcore Ooh. mode. Wow! I didn't feel like playing that because no, <laughs> I was dying a lot on normal <laughs> <laughs> hardcore. So, uh, did you start a new character or did you use an existing one? Now, I used an existing one because I had the chance to respec uh, the points. Okay. And I'd, I'd kind of cocked it up the first time, so I got to <laughs> fix that a little bit. <laughs> um, and did you did you restart, or did you pick up from your progression, and has the stage progression probably hasn't changed that much? No, it hasn't changed that much. There's a few little new areas, and, uh, yeah, new mobs coming up at, at, at you at times that you, I thought, oh, I didn't remember seeing them here. They're normally later on in the game. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's all pretty much similar, if not the same, with slight tweaks here and there. But it all seems to be for the good. Excellent. I, I still have no idea when that game is actually going to release and come out of beta. I have no idea myself. They're talking about uh, having it uh, open beta continuously sometime this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm, <laughs> I'm really pulling for those guys. It's just, it seemed to me that they had a chance before Diablo 2 to drop this thing, and I thought it was really polished at that point. Uh, and then I thought, well, hey, there's a, a certain dungeon crawler that hasn't come out all summer. Maybe they have a <laughs> chance to hit in the summer, you know? But now Torchlight 2 has released, and it seems like they're past that window as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. Perhaps maybe something in the 
spring lull of next year. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of next year. I, I think you'd be kind of crazy to even launch a free to play game in the fall when all of the console releases and, and big, uh, you know, exactly. big PC releases come out. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Dan, talk to me a little bit about Torchlight 2. I got about, I don't know, maybe two, two or three hours in. So, uh, talk to me. Oh, you Go mean the other that. game? Yes. yes. Oh, That's, it's, so, it's so good. It's about the same mm. amount of time I played earlier on today, uh, with Common Troll again, actually. Well, see, there's the difference. Now, <laughs> yesterday the servers weren't up, so I had to play by myself for three hours and you got to play with someone else. Yeah. But that, yeah, I probably shouldn't say it that way, but anyway. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll just overlook that. How about? I know. Always I more got, fun with someone else. I got to play with myself. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's more Torchlight. It's, you know, fantastic, nice kind of almost cartoony graphics, uh, fantastic AOE effects, spells. Um, I, I'm playing as a, um, uh, I can't remember what I call the character now, basically using range, ranged weapons because it turns out everyone else is, uh, playing what I wanted to play and I thought, well, I better <laughs> mix it up a little bit. <laughs> I totally. I yeah. totally did play a mage this time. Yeah. Everyone's playing an Ember Mage, apparently. Everyone on my friends list, they're all playing that. So I was like, fine, I'll do something else. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm kind of recreated the character I used in the uh, beta. Okay. Um, yeah, it's changed quite a bit since then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks fantastic. The story, uh, there's some lovely little kind of nods to uh, my childhood. Um, there's a great bit you're going through and you, you find... One-eyed Willie's other eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Chester Copperpot. I was like, this is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. Zero Wing texted me this morning. Let me read this text. I'll read it to you. Okay. It says, Oh my God, while I was doing a quest in Torchlight, I came across a large hole in the ground with a bucket above. It told me to put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> I, fo- <laughs> I found a green vial in a cell and put it in and got Buffalo Dawn Bill's ma- hide mask <laughs> to, to, to wear. And he says, I was waiting for a troll to walk in with lipstick and trench coat and his penis tucked between his legs and asking <laughs> you if you would fuck it while goodbye horses played. <laughs> Uh, so this is the kind of humor that's in this game. And Shelby, let me just say that I think that if you were a PC guy, this would be straight up your alley because there is a huge parallel to be drawn between Torchlight 2 and the level of polish that go into certain Nintendo games. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that. I'm definitely getting I mean, obviously there's you know two loot-driven games come out so close together, and Borderlands is good about humor too, but... Uh, like I've like I've said in the past to you, Steve, I need to fix my computer, my video card. It's sitting in a box under my desk, and I kind of melted it a while back. You know, oops. <laughs> you you might be able to run it without it. I mean, this game you can run this game on basically nothing. Oh, really? Yeah, it pretty okay. much requires the same specs as the original. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. But like uh, one of the things I noticed, and one thing that uh, Troll pointed out to me because uh, we were on raid call uh, last night as I was playing and I was streaming a little bit. Whenever you break open uh, like a pile of rocks, little tiny spiders crawl out and things. You know what I mean? Like out from yeah. under the rocks. And there was a place in sort of the first dungeon that you come across that has a cage hanging from a ceiling with a skeleton inside of it. Like somebody died inside this cage, right? Well, as you walk by this time, he's still swinging, but now he kind of like leans over and reaches down like he's trying to grab you. You know, like just little tiny things that make this game so, so stinking charming. It's fantastic. It's, it's weird. You kind of, the more you talk about this game, I feel like you could have just cut this conversation and stuck it after you said, let's talk about Borderlands 2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the level of humor, the level of detail, I mean, there's not quite, I mean, there's not like literally a skeleton in a cage reaching out for you, but I mean, there's this, the same kind of nods, you know, wink and nods, you know, tongue and cheek kind of stuff hidden in there when you dig around, so. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good. And, and for 20 bucks, and I think I, I got mine for 15 because we went in on a four pack. Man, the funny thing was when it was in beta and Diablo 2 was right about ready to release or had just released, uh, I, I said, you know, I really like what Diablo's selling me here, like as far as the world and the lore and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was kind of eh on Torchlight. Now I like Torchlight a million times more than Diablo 3. You played uh, much it, Diablo recently? 
I, 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 I barely got through it on normal, and I was just like, eh, okay, I'm glad I'm done. You keep talking about Diablo 2, and part of it, for, maybe it's a little posh of me to, you know, call somebody out on their own podcast, but that's twice you said Diablo 2, and I think you meant Diablo 3. I think uh, that's yeah, what Dan's well, getting at. That's, that's probably, <laughs> Diablo 2 was awesome, but, <laughs> um, yeah, 3, I don't know, it's just, uh, I, I just, I don't know. I had fun with it. Maybe part of it is the fact that I played a, a melee character, a barbarian in Diablo 3, but, man, I am infinitely, infinitely enjoying more uh, Torchlight 2 than I think I ever enjoyed Diablo 3. Wow. It's a huge amount of fun. It seems like as an Ember Mage, there's a chance that a massive meteor can come out of the sky with one of you. Skills. That's yeah, fantastic. I know. <laughs> it's great. That's why I wanted to play one. <laughs> I said no. I've got these guns, and every now and then bats appear. Woo! <laughs> you can get meteors to fall out of the sky in a bullet witch as well. So I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> uh, so, in, any other thoughts on Torchlight Dan? Or uh, yeah, buy it if you haven't got it. The chances are. You've probably got a PC that can run it. If not, it won't take a huge amount of money to actually make it run it. So yeah. go out, buy it, enjoy it. It's so much fun. It's dirt cheap. And I think that if you are sort of on the fence about that, full Steam Workshop mod support. Yeah. And six-player co-op at the same time. Man, mm. that could be absolutely insane. That's two more than four. Exactly. It is. <laughs> two more than Borderlands 2, I think. There you go. So it, it's uh, probably just a cacophony of, <laughs> you know. So from what Dan's telling me, I need to play Torchlight Two during loading screens of Borderlands. Is that what I need to do? Just trade off when I see a loading screen on one, just turn to the other and play it for a while. Oh my god! How many hours do you think you could keep that up without mul- like with multitasking just burning you out? I I'm, I'm pretty lazy, so I'm gonna say a lot. <laughs> Omg! Omg! Extra life. Holy crap. Could oh, you geez. imagine? I, I think the other members of the Nintendo Oki crew would kill me if I tried to propose, <laughs> hey, let's just watch me play Borderlands 2 for 12 hours straight, and then this other game neither of you have ever heard of. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> uh, just put one eye on one screen and one eye on the other. That's all. <laughs> yeah, just get one of those Sony TVs that like, split the screen, so you just close one eye and look at it like get an eye patch or something. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, anything else, Dan? No, not what I can think of. Yeah. I'm kind of but burnt out at the moment. I'm trying to <laughs> level up. And burnt out. Words. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, it, it's not Guild Wars 2, yeah. I believe, is what he's trying to <laughs> oh. Well, for me, obviously, Torchlight 2 in a little, you know, a little bit. And, uh, you know, I picked up the last story again the other day and popped that back in and was playing on my Wii again uh, with my Wii 2 HDMI, you know, because i got to get some kind of use out of it. Uh, <laughs> so... As soon as I popped that game in, I, I was dreading putting it back in a lot of the times, and I would just go to something else. But as soon as I popped it back in, I was right back into the game. That's saying something for a JRPG. Yeah, and it, it's, it, it is, hmm, okay. So I'm trying to think of how to actually say this. So, it has, I guess it has quirks like, every other JRPG has that, that are just weird, but there's something I can't understand. I was doing a side quest and this side quest, I can't really figure out if it's Japanese game design sensibilities or limitations of the hardware, right? So I, I'm doing this little side quest and the reward from the side quest, the ultimate reward is to be able to swim. Pretty, pretty big deal. You'd think, right? It's a useful skill. Yeah, I mean, when, when when there's water around, when there's not, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, well, I don't, I can't figure this out. And I literally had to go onto the net to figure out what to do. And this is the process. The process is you talk to the quest giver. He gives you the quest and he says, well, you know, in, in order for me to teach you this skill on how to swim, you need to catch three frogs, and they're all around town. But the problem is, they're really not all around town. You have to literally go into the inn or someplace like this, load another map, come back out into the city, reload the city map, and then go to the fortune teller. She can tell you where a frog is, and you can go find it. And if you get there and you can't catch it and it jumps away from you, 
then you have to go repeat the whole process and go back to the inn and reload the map and go to the fortune teller and find <laughs> another frog. Well, that sounds completely sensible. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know why this guy needs endangered frogs to teach you how to swim. That seems <laughs> like Peter would be all over that. But the worst part of it is, after you get the three, if you go get three more, you get some other items. So guess what I did? <laughs> I went and caught six frogs, right? Rinse and ribbit, eat, repeat. <laughs> I don't know. God. It didn't really work. God. Now, wait a minute. This guy is taking up my spotlight, Dan. What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm the one with the corny puns around Have here. you never listened to my podcast? <laughs> No, believe me, I know. <laughs> and that one show that I was on was all bad puns. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. So it's just little tiny things like that. But the game as a whole, I mean, it is, it, it's different. It is a cover-based action RPG, like I said. Uh, but a lot of the skills and, and the way that the battle system unfolds is you would take cover behind something a la Gears of War. Uh, you can peek out and you have like a first-person... Uh, crossbow type of thing that you can equip and that can lure enemies away and separate them. And then all of a sudden above their head, it'll say alone, which means they're by themselves. They're, they're separated from the group that they're with. And by attacking them, you will not uh, alert others. So when you're in cover, your contextual a button will change to like slash. So you can come out of cover and slash an enemy and that does more damage. All this stuff is kind of based on that. And then later on, you can hold down an A button and go into sort of like a topographical uh, turn-based uh, sort of representation of everything and move your cursor. And it's called the Gale skill, which means your main character, Zale, he will fly across the map and sort of spin around in the 360 and make a tornado. And it sort of like serves as crowd control at one point. And... If you have a mage in your party, the way that, that skills are cast is, like, let's say your mage casts a fire spell. And when they cast a fire spell, not only, it, it doesn't hit the enemy, they cast an area effect on the ground, and that is what burns and does damage to the enemy. So by the same token, now Zale can do the Gale ability right into that little circle, and it becomes an armor break for all the enemies on the battlefield. Hmm. So then you break their armor. And the same thing for heal circles and things like that. Like, he can heal everybody by doing a gale right into that heal circle. But by the same token, while you're in a fire circle or something, your weapon is imbued for a certain amount of time with said element. Like, it's really neat, and, and it's a different take, and it makes me think that it's a lot of sort of uh, innovation that should have been in the Final Fantasy series that would have been. It sounds like they kind of learned a thing from, uh, like, teams uh, getting together on, like, uh, MMOs or something like that. Okay, you buff this person so they can be a tank and be the off-tank during this brief period of this yeah. attack and all that kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, and it seems like uh, maybe a little bit of knowledge from, like, a Tales game or something like that, you know, from, from the Tales team, the way that a lot of those um, action-based uh, battle systems work like that. But it's really cool. I just got an ability where uh, if there is, like, a circle cast near a wall, I can run up a wall and come down and slash and do damage plus spread that circle out all over the place. So, like, it's it's really, really neat the way that it opens up. And, uh, you know, equipment progression is there. Uh, you know, you have to get certain items to, to be able to upgrade your weapons, and it's all... Uh, it's, they don't upgrade into other things. They upgrade into plus one, plus two, plus three. So that part's kind of boring. But it, it's all, you know, unique armor representations and weapons and things like that. And How would you compare it to Xenoblade Chronicles, though? I think that's the question. I would say that Xenoblade Chronicles probably plays more like an MMO. Right. Uh, Last Story probably plays more like a real-time uh, real turn-based hybrid strategy RPG, maybe? Like, you're, you're still controlling the character and everything, but the way that you can go through and hand out commands and things at, at one point, like, once you unlock that ability, it, it kind of, like, takes the camera straight up above, and you move it around on the battlefield, and it shows, you know, everybody's life bars and things like that, and then you can, uh, you can assign people. Like, what happens is, uh, Zale has this gather ability. Once you initiate that, it takes all of the focus. He draws all the focus from every enemy in the map. 
which leaves the mages alone and things like that. So when you have that gather ability uh, activated, your mages cast uh, twice as fast. So when a mage uh, casts something, it starts at a 20, you know, like a 20 tick countdown. If it were to take 20 seconds, it would only take 10 while you have the gather ability, while you're you're taking the focus away right. from uh, from everybody. But by the same token, if you go through and you manually hand out uh, orders for each of your party members, if you have a mage cast something, it'll it's only a three second countdown. Like it's really fast, you know. And then they continue to use that skill throughout the fight. Uh, but it reminds me a lot art style wise of like a genericized Final Fantasy VIII because Zale looks a lot like Squall. Okay. Uh, it is really a great game. I don't think that it even approaches Xenoblade Chronicles for me. That being said, I am not done yet, so that could change. Uh, but I am, I was so pumped to get into it. I played it in like 15, 20, you know, sometimes half hour, 45 inc- minute increments for like four hours the other day on my day off. All I wanted to do was veg, veg out, and uh, man, it was just so much fun, and I'm so sucked into the story again. <laughs> it's how, great. How close do you think you're already getting to uh, knocking it out? <sighs> They're saying that it's some like a, like around a 25 to 30 hour game, and I want to say I'm approaching 10 hours at this point. Okay. So I really didn't play all that much because it came out like two days before Guild Wars 2, and that's like a, the nail in the coffin, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it is really a great game and it's beautiful. And now the audio is just, uh, you know, the, the Nobu Uematsu audio is 10 times better through the HDMI cable, I think. So pretty awesome. And that soundtrack is amazing, too. So... We got one uh, epic email this week, and uh, it comes to us from uh, from my buddy Ben. Uh, and he says, Yeah, so you know, I've been playing World of Warcraft for ages, and it has been with me through some of the best online gameplay of my life, so I just wanted to put my thoughts down in word form because I'm tired of thinking this stuff. First, I want to affirm my fanboyism and say that WoW has been arguably the best gaming experience overall for me, ever. That said, it is by no means perfect, and thus I have paid for Guild Wars 2, and i got to say that I'm so pumped that it is not like its predecessor. <sighs> and you know, when they announced it was going to be an MMO, I was like, oh, you remember Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was so unsure about buying it. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was completely deflated, you know? Uh, because, I, I mean, obviously, the first thing you think of is, Oh, I really need to kill that boss over there, but they just did. And now I got to wait thirty minutes for it to respawn again. <laughs> you you know? are the only person that can save this universe. I in know. Twenty minutes when the <laughs> boss respawns. I know. Yeah. 
so he says, I got Guild Wars and World of Warcraft about a week apart, and I end up dumping Guild Wars and going to WoW for damn near the next decade. And he did. He's not lying. Uh, <laughs> seriously, one week, and I just didn't care at all. I like to keep a close eye on the gaming world as I was a console gamer and was rabid as a Scotsman. Eh? Huh? huh? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> about the whole thing. Uh, so when I heard about Guild Wars 2 actually coming out and seeing the beta vids and positive word of mouth from friends and former co-workers, I was so let down at first that I almost didn't give it a chance. Hell, Steve and my roommate got more use out of my Guild Wars account than I did, and I bought the damn thing. And we did, yeah. You know, because he didn't use it. I was like, hey, uh... Hey, hey, uh, hey, Beans, what, what's your, what's your login for your, for your Hey, you, you're just not using this thing. I'm just sitting here in front of this computer. Why not, you know? Hey. I know. I mean, somebody paid 50 bucks for it. It's a shame. It's, it's a shame. Just, it's, it's just sitting there. It's a shame. You know. We need to tailor, damn it. I know. <laughs> so on day one of the Guild Wars 2 release, I hear from my two former coworkers and friends on Vent going on and on about how much fun they were having playing it. I gave in and bought it, and thus far I haven't really regretted it yet. The leveling process is kind of neat, but I foresee some tweaking needing to be done due to starter and lobby zones dying down now that the general population of servers is in the upper and max level ranges now. I also want to state that Guild Wars 2 really needs to get their events working better because it's just not for me. When I go into a zone and I see events for escorts standing still and not going anywhere, it feels like a waste of time because a lot of them are linked, and if the chain bugs midway, you can't finish the chain. That's wasted content on the developer end and time on mine, as they are a principal source of experience for the leveling process. And I agree with that, and I don't think I've come across a lot that have been bugged that... I mean, in the betas, yeah. I, I came across that one invincible... Uh, oh, the invincible centaur. <laughs> and that completely bugged that that uh, dynamic quest, which, you know, okay, it's a beta. Uh, but... I don't think that the escorts. I I don't think I've really seen escorts just standing around. Have you seen that, Dan? Yeah, there's there's been a couple of uh, events that have been completely bugged and just don't do anything. There's uh, one area I was in earlier, and uh, you're meant to protect these guys whilst they're doing something with some golems or whatever. I don't know. And they never get attacked the entire time. They're just sitting there working away. <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a couple of escort ones like that, and there's also a skill point that doesn't exist on one of the maps, which really pisses me off because it's the last thing I've got to do to complete that entire <laughs> map. And I'll get like 40 silver from it. Can't do a thing. <laughs> well, he so. goes on to say that I really appreciate the way gold has value in this game, but there is something off-putting about needing gems for everything important like character slots to bank tabs, but gold to gems is nice. And, yeah, we talked a lot about that last week in our little RPG question about, uh, you know, them wanting to obviously cut down on, on the gold farmers and, and things like that. The story mode is a nice touch. I have a level 56 guardian female char, female char whom I absolutely adore at that point. Uh, the voices are great, and give Steve Bloom a fucking medal because he seems to be doing so many different voices, and I love it. <laughs> That's kind of that guy's thing. He's pretty good at that stuff. Yeah, and that he has to be loaded. I mean, he's another Nolan North, you know, <laughs> but a little less of a rock star. Um, I need more tries at the dungeons, but I was digging at the Ascalon catacombs when I did it. It's refreshing to not have to rely on the Holy Trinity, but let's face it, they most assuredly exist and will be damn near necessary to a small point when doing high-end stuff. PvP still needs to coalesce a bit more but it's solid and had the potential to be all kinds of entertaining. All in all, Guild Wars 2 is worth the money at the moment if you don't go into it with astronomically high hopes. It's a good game with the potential to be great, but that only comes in time as it did even with World of Warcraft. Ah, good point. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, not done yet. We're about halfway done. So, <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a nap in between? Yeah. <laughs> take a powder. Um as for in my insights a while, well, like I said, I'm a fanboy, so I have a lot of good things to say, but I won't blow smoke up nobody's ass by saying Blizzard is perfect because they're not. Hell, no one is, but they seem to embrace it to the point of fuck you if you don't like it, and that just pisses me off. These days, they seem to have it in their head as to what we want, and we are wrong when we think or say otherwise. Mm -hmm. That said, they have delivered a solid and polished and smooth game experience. And I think that's sort of true for Diablo 3 as well. But uh, that stupid auction house, man. That stupid auction house. <laughs> you know what? Another thing I'll say on the subject of Diablo 3. 
I am noticing in Torchlight 2 that when I get items dropped for me, they're not five levels below me. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, imagine that. Imagine getting something that I can't use for three or four levels. That never happened in uh, Diablo 3 for me. No, I don't know. It might have happened in the later levels, but or the later uh, skill difficulties, but uh, I'd probably lean against no. <laughs> yeah, he says... Uh, even if it's five years later, a la transmogrification. I personally enjoy the Trinity Tank Healer DPS as I know that as soon as we go in, we are expected to get our respective jobs done and achieve the goal, be it a five-man dungeon crawl or my personal favorite, a 25-man progression raid. It's painfully apparent that while, due to its age and knowledge base, cater to a player base that is jaded, elitist, and sometimes downright mean. Some, sometimes? <laughs> sometimes downright mean. <laughs> and mean-spirited. People- Mean people on the internet? What? <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I am looking forward to the uh, expansion coming out for Warcraft because um, it'll be a lot quieter in Guild Wars 2. Yeah, it the, probably will be. You're probably right. It. Hopefully yeah. it won't be too much quieter and, I mean, just another MMO fall to the wayside. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, he said, but that's what you get when a game becomes a hallmark time sink for the masses, just as, uh, just as Call of Duty or Counter-Strike has with shooters and StarCraft has with RTS games. It's to be expected, right? Well, Guild Wars 2 rewards you for not being an uber-fied ass, and in my mind, it's a master stroke of genius. XP for resing fallen allies and NPCs, a leveling process that encourages grouping. If you're the Care Bear type then I need say no more. WoW is notorious for giving its fans exactly what they want, too, which is good. The features are really what we play for nowadays. Transmog for customizing the gear you wear to art you like more, reforging to change your stats to a more favorable setup to your class. Constant balancing act of the class's abilities and talents is a staple of the game, and the constant change used to seem nice, but now it's like just an awkward wedgie you adjust to. That's pretty good. That's, that's, that's pretty good there, i got to admit. Uh, the dungeon and subsequent raid finder tools are godsends, and I wish Guild Wars would do something a tad similar. My LFG tab just seems to be empty and dead. The journal was uh, was okay when first now implemented, but now it is just a handy yet somewhat overlooked feature, I feel. It will be interesting to me to see this game a year from now and hopefully not still talking about bugs that rear their ugly heads over and over again and how the game is dead and gone. Mm. I want to see how the game evolves into a spectator sport, not unlike its predecessor and WoW for that matter. The PvP in WoW wasn't perfect when released either. Alterac Valley was just too long and obnoxious, and Warsong Gulch had issues forever. But they refined their system and even added a more personalized PvP experience in the arena, which is almost a full-blown eSport. If only they can get a spectator mode, WoW will never truly die due to people winning money at huge tourneys, like with StarCraft and League of Legends. Alright, so this is it. Home stretch, right? He says, I gotta say it. Every time I hear Steve ask, is this the WoW killer? I cringe. And I don't know. Have I, have I asked that before, Dan? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I haven't heard you say it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, perhaps this is different Steve. I probably did think it at some for the, point. For the sake of argument, I've heard a lot of people name Steve say that. So yeah, like, like Dan said, there's other Steves out there that say it. <laughs> I mean, I, I would think that, you know, I, I often wonder what not what the wild killer is, but probably the wild successor. Like it, it has to die at some point. I mean, it's been stabbed for years, but it just keep, the the carcass just keeps crawling, man. <laughs> like it, it won't, it won't die. But he says, uh, not because of my love uh, of the game, but for the redundancy of the question. Wow. is a game franchise that is approaching the 10 year mark and still doing surprisingly well for itself. Guild Wars has the potential to replace wow. But as Scott put it back in January, the only thing that will kill wow is itself. Mm. I feel that they're doing a fairly decent job of that and in perhaps an un- unintended wise move on Blizzard's part. No one should want to be an eternal game. Graphics do not last forever. The systems that could push it in the beginning won't even load the game nowadays, and it's still a ridiculously low resource intensive game. Guild Wars has some serious growing pains to go through, and I hope for the best as it deserves its time to shine. And I look forward to playing with my fellow gamesmen and wish you all the best. P.S. I suck at this letter writing shit, so kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> With respect, Ben, aka Tangram Hammerhand slash Iron Hander. <laughs> so, thank you very much, sir, for that, and thank you for making me go through all of that exposition. Can I applaud? <laughs> I feel like I need to. That was, that was impressive. <laughs> No, but I mean, 
mean, I, I think he brings up a, a, a lot of good points, and I think they are probably finer points than we've ever delved into on the show, Dan. Yeah, um, one thing he brought up about the starter levels, I'm not too worried about that because once I finish my story, I'm going to go. I'm going to be clearing all those up. I imagine quite a lot of other people are going to be doing that as well. Yeah, and then you know, people are going to start new characters, so. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Well, you know, I, I will say that there is a part of me that's like, oh, uh, well, Dan's already level 80. Uh, you know, like I'm totally falling into the typical MMO sort of trap. <laughs> and it doesn't matter here because of the, the, the level adjusting and things like that. It totally doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. But I still kind of feel like, uh, okay. <laughs> What just makes me so nervous are some of those MMO nomads out there, MMO mads, I guess, if you will. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. <laughs> that, I mean, we've, we've seen this happen with, you know, so many MMOs at this point. You know, Age of Conan, you know, uh, Star Wars, or rather, yeah, Star Wars most recently. Mm-hmm. And yeah. with, you know, like Dan said, that WoW expansion's, you know, coming out soon. You know, how, is this just going to be another one? I mean, it's free to play, so that, I think that's definitely doing a lot for it out of the box instead of, you know, bolting that on once they realize they're in trouble. Yeah. And they don't have the ridiculous deficit to make up to like uh, Star Wars did. Mm. But it's just like how much can – is there enough room in the market for more than one MMO? And if there is, you know, how do you ever kill off WoW – even if it is WoW too, you know, I mean, how does that how does that torch get passed? Yeah, does it? Yeah, and and, and WoW's definitely on. I think WoW's on the way out at this point. I mean, you can look at the numbers; they're kind of going down. They get a resurgence every time they kick out a new a new expansion. Cataclysm was, you know, a pretty huge deal for what they it did. It was huge, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that got people back in for a while. But I mean, you've you've kind of seen the numbers. They just have they kind of peaked at what about twelve million or so, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. And now they're down to maybe 10 or maybe even lower. So, I mean, those are still enormous numbers, and anyone would, you know, kill a stinking, you know, dwarven elf just to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't kill a dwarven elf? No, right, even if yeah. they exist. <laughs> but I, I think as an aside, and I think it needs to be said here that, you know, the story came out that, that um, Zeshik and Mazaika were retiring from Bioware and retiring from games. And it's sad to see that, uh, you know, sort of the, the failed Star Wars model did this. It's, it's just, I don't know. It, it is, it is sad because those guys have totally given us a ton of great games over the years. Yeah. EA stepping in with Bioware and, uh, I, I, I hesitate to say diluting the Bioware name, mm-hmm. but for lack of a better term, that's kind of what they did. They definitely bolted the name Bioware under several different studios that, you know, may or may not have wanted it. Yeah. So for better or worse, it happened. And, you know, I, I feel for the doctors because those guys, have, you know, built Bioware and it's an amazing student. They've made, you know, a lot of the greatest games over the last, you know, five years, maybe arguably 10. But Star Wars, it, it's like, I don't know. It's just like, it seems like maybe if they would have stuck that game out before. And I guess if they just could have been wow. And I don't mean could have come out. You know, when WoW did, when MMOs were just starting to boom, but if it could have came out and been like WoW, where like, oh, WoW was kind of broken at first for a while, and it wasn't until maybe like, you know, 18 months or so in that things started really kind of picking up, and people like, hey, this game actually works now. Yeah, yeah. But it just didn't get that chance, you know, and if it would have, and I suppose it'll still, you know, 18 months from now, Old Republic will still be around. It'll be completely free to play at that point if it's not... It's only free to play partially now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's going to be to a certain level or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like I mean, WoW is. Yeah, yeah. WoW is free up to twenty. But if it would have had that chance, I mean, it would have been enormous, wouldn't it? Have? I think. Yeah, yeah. But just because WoW is is the juggernaut that it is, or maybe not even that. Maybe just that everyone's so familiar with WoW. I think that's mm-hmm. probably more of it, honestly. Just no other MMO gets that chance, gets that same grace period that WoW did when it came out. Well, and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the funny part of this story is coming out. It's almost five years to the day of the Bioware acquisition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I think that has to be said because when when an MMO sort of flops, and I guess you could you could probably classify, you know, Star Wars as a flop. Ask EA's accountants, and yes, they mm-hmm. would say it is. This was probably the earliest that they could get out. I, I would think. It makes you wonder. You know, so, I mean, I, I think you're a fool to, to not read into that a little bit. But um, I think that's about it, fellas. So, uh, uh, Shelby, how about some shout-outs, buddy? Uh, I want to give shout-outs to, you know, the rest of my Nintendo Okies over at Nintendo-Okie.com. 
uh, you know, Tony, Micah, Shannon, Will, you know, shout out to those guys for, you know, helping us build that yeah, site. hello, fellas. Uh, also want to give out, Extra Life is coming up, and I know you yes. guys are uh, hardcore uh, gunning for it, too, but we are the same over at nintendo Oki. so if you're listening to my voice, people, if you donate to the Gainsman, if you donate to IGN, if you donate to anyone, just donate to Extra Life, please. It's a good cause. Um, you mentioned uh, last week, Steve, that you were going to be teaming up with uh, your local hospital to be playing some games. Yeah, we're going to be doing a couple things, I, I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, I, I'm not entirely positive. I know next week I have uh, an, an interview set up for the show mm-hmm. uh, with, with my contact down there and things like that. And then we're going to try to get down there a little bit before uh, the actual date of, of the Extra Life uh, Marathon. So... Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to go down there. I'm excited to go down and see how the, the inner workings of everything, you know, happens down there and, and, yeah. and get a chance to talk to her and, and things like that. Like, I'm really excited. Yeah. The reason I bring it up is, uh, we're doing a similar thing at, uh, the St. Francis, uh, I believe it's called the Children's Hospital at St. Francis or something like that. I just call it the St. Francis Children's Hospital because that's a mouthful either way. <laughs> but we're going down there um, <laughs> on October 9th. We're going to be doing like a mini marathon. We're going to be playing with the kids and, we're doing our best to get like radio stations involved and like trying to get sponsors around to we get sponsors around Tulsa to help get the word out about extra life. We got a, uh, I think we're getting some extra life flyers slapped on some pizza boxes here and there. We're hoping maybe mm-hmm. the news will show up and kind of put it out on the afternoon news or something. So doing our best to spread the word for a great, great cause. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, uh, you know, Nintendo Oki does fly under the VG Hub banner, but you guys have your own team set up. So, uh, you know, if you're going to donate, you want to do VG Hub, you know, Nintendo Oki is still VG Hub. So make yeah. sure you, uh, you take a look. I'll, I'll throw a link to it in the, in our show notes for this week too. So cool. Cool. Um, Daniel. Yeah, just one this week. Uh, happy birthday to my good friend, uh, DJ Leroy. Hey, Pirates. happy birthday, dude. Yeah. Oh, the date of recording, it's his 27th birthday. So. Happy Wait, awesome. 27 again? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that a trend you guys were noticing a while back? Oh, God, yeah, yeah that was nuts. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm Nebula 427. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the attack of the 27s. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, for me, uh, Shelby, thank you. Uh, I'm so happy that we finally got a chance to sort of uh, to overlap, as it were. My pleasure. Anytime, uh, just, you know, say the word, and if I can make it happen, I will be here. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. the invite. I appreciate you uh, haphazardly shoving pizza into your pie hole so you can get onto Skype and uh, and start recording. So, also vghub.net, as we just said, there is a great wealth of gaming content at vghub.net. There's something for everybody. So, uh, Shelby, web for the week to come. PSN ID, Xbox Live, uh, you know, whatever. Where are you gonna be? Uh, stop me if you heard this one before, but on pretty much every gaming service imaginable, <laughs> I am Nebula Four Twenty Seven. <laughs> Uh, that's Twitter, that's PSN, that's Game Center, that's Facebook, uh, that's Xbox Live. I don't know what the heck my Wii code is, but I imagine if you break it down into binary, it probably spells Nebula 427. <laughs> uh, but that's me. And also, you can catch my writings, my more of my talkings and banter over at Nintendo-Oki.com. We do our weekly news and what we've been ga- playing show we have weekly videos where we play games and yell at each other and we have our trivia show the question block where you can win fabulous video game prizes and learn about video games and play really terrible games on the go round like uh shadow, shadow the, hedgehog. the hedgehog yeah well you know <laughs> I, I i listened to our community it was a request so i did my best to abide and well <laughs> let's just say i there was a lot of screaming involved yeah, you're a better man than i <laughs> uh dan what for the week to come oh as ever Hardly down, put it into Twitter, Raptor, Xbox Live, Steam. You'll find me. I might not be on them. I'll, I'll be on Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Just hardly down, uh, 42, uh, point 42, 19, I think. Uh, yeah, hardly down everywhere. Yes. Uh, yourself, Steve. Uh, for me, it is J S S L I F E L I K E pretty much everywhere. That's PSN. That's, uh, that's Xbox Live. That's Twitter. That's Steam. That's Skype. I foresee a lot of Steam in my future, so add me on Steam and we'll try to get some six-player torchlight going on. I feel yeah. like we need to start some sort of club, like people that have the same name across all these different systems. <laughs> I never understood, like, changing it. You know, like, I, it, that just gets confusing for me. Yeah, I, I guess if you just call yourself Bob, you know, more than likely that's going to be taken, so maybe you got to throw some numbers behind it or something. I don't know. Bob1971. <laughs> or something. Or Bob3695. 
Bob 27, yeah. surely. <laughs> yeah, Bob 27. <laughs> sure, oh, he's out there. There's more, there's more than 26 Bobs out there now, I guarantee you that. Uh, all right, Dan, time to pay the bills, my friend. Okay, well, as ever, check us out on our Facebook page. Uh, we haven't got any new likes this week, so screw you. That's been kind of dead over there. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to, you can catch us on Stitcher. And don't forget, we've mentioned it earlier, but Shelby mentioned it, Extra Life. We need your money. Um, you can <laughs> choose who you want to sponsor. Go to extra-life.org forward slash team forward slash VG Hub Team 2012. Uh, we haven't had a voicemail this week. Uh, we want more. So um, call the RPG hotline at 412-267-RPG1. You can email us. Our email address is thegamesmanrpg at gmail.com or our Twitter account. That's at thegamesmanrpg. Uh, no new... Uh, followers on that so I think there were a few there but I think they were like the triple X sex bots I think uh, yeah well they don't care yeah. no more <laughs> mystery followers or subscribers again with no the no I, I kind of I was hoping maybe we'd find out who that was but oh well uh, well you can listen to our YouTube channel it's uh, youtube.com forward slash the games from RPG check out some of our videos there we haven't put one up for a little while so yeah <laughs> we'll have to show up but that'll be about it <laughs> <laughs> Try playing Shadow the Hedgehog for 15 minutes. That's a YouTube video you can put up. <laughs> well, well, it might the... be one of um, 24 hours of snuggle truck in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. It says that, hey, congratulations, your account is approved for uploads of videos longer than 15 minutes. So what would you think they would do with 24 hour <laughs> YouTube video? Ooh. Oh, my oh, God. How long that would take to upload. Oh, God, I'd make you do it. <laughs> I'd make you do it. Totally. <laughs> yeah, um iTunes reviews. We have two. Yeah, I did my job this week. And you know what? One UK review and one uh, US review. So US is still, they're just stragglers, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we had uh, Bungle75, and Bungle75 says, Well put together, engagingly friendly, and knowledgeable. Rates us five stars and says, This balances out professional production with really nice low-level chat. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And our buddy, Teflon212, he says, Awesome! With an exclamation mark after that. Uh, he, he rates us five stars, and he says, This is a fantastic podcast. It's definitely worth taking the time to check it out. So, thank you both for the iTunes reviews. We appreciate them. Yeah, cheers, guys. Nice. All right. Well, that is going to do it for episode 86. So, on behalf of Nebula427, on behalf of Hardly Dan, I am Lifelike. We are the Gamesmen, and until next time, we ask... What role will you play? Well, Dan, it is nice to finally talk to you. Uh, I say in person, but I'm just looking at a gray question mark on my screen. But <laughs> after hearing you and uh, Steve converse back and forth over several weeks, it is uh, nice to actually be, you know, talking to you and not just pretending you can hear me when I'm talking to my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to um, actually talk to someone you've listened to for a while, isn't it? Yeah. You have to. Uh, you should. You should add him on Skype so you, just so you can see his picture. <laughs> you gotta see his. Is that why I can't see a God. picture? <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's probably why, right? I'll give it a shot. What the, what's the worst that can happen? I guess he could decline me. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. I wanted to do my uh, my Hardly Dan impression for everyone. Let me give this a shot here. Uh, so I was playing Guild Wars 2 the other day, and uh, the strangest thing happened to me. Uh, for some reason, somebody <laughs> just walked up and gave me something that was really... <laughs> But, you know, like one guy has like adrenaline fueled strength and another, the, the chick, she's like a human. Um, what's the fucking word I'm looking for? Are you trying to say she's really good at learning Tekken combos? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>
Because I mean, I mean, I need the addition for the show, maybe. <laughs> satisfied with this podcast please return any portions for a full refund so you can run and tell that homeboy